Just ask yourself this one question. Is my environment environmentally friendly? Hello, levies. Welcome back to Thy Kingdom Come, Matthew 6 and 33, and also my other channel, Ladija's Creations. Levies, if you're new to my channel, go ahead and take this time to click on the subscribe button and the bell so that you can be notified of future uploads. Did you know that your environment is vitally important to your life? It's more important than life itself. I know some may be asking, why would you say that it's more important than life itself? Well, God thought so. Because he had to create an environment first in order for us to survive in the environment. So, if he created the environment first, he must have thought that it was more important to create it first before he created us. Because if he didn't, he would have done it in the reverse. Instead, he created an environment that was conducive to our livelihood, to growth, to our health, to learning, and to an environment that was conducive to our physical bodies and our state of minds. Do you know that when we stay in the environment in which God intended for us to be in, that's a layer of protection for us as well. So when we're in the right environment, it becomes a shield of protection. Take, for example, the birds. They were created to have flight. They were created to fly in the air. Take, for example, as well, the fish. If you take the fish out of the sea, you do not have to kill it. What's going to happen to it? It's going to die. If you remove a tree from the soil, what's going to happen to that tree? It's going to die. So in essence, when you remove something away from its source, you will have in essence taken it away from its environment that is conducive to its health, to its growth, and to its life and well-being. In Genesis chapter 1, it says that God created the heavens and the earth because darkness was upon the face of the deep. God's spirit moved upon the face of the waters. God said, let there be light, and there was light. He divided the light from the darkness. He placed a firmament in the midst of the water from the water. God made the firmament. Then God divided the water which was under the firmament from the water which was above the firmament. Then he called the firmament heaven. He separated the water and land. He called the land earth and the water the sea. Then he allowed the earth to bring forth grass, herbs, yielding seeds, fruit trees, Yielding fruit after its own kind, whose seed is in itself. Get that, y'all. Y'all need. Uh, let me say that again. Y'all need to get that one right there. Fruit trees yielding fruit after its own kind, whose seed is in itself. He made us just like that, y'all. He made us just like that. Remember that, because whatever you're going to be. It's on the inside of you already. Now, let me get back to this. Fruit trees yielding fruit after its own kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. He created lights, two great lights to give light upon the earth. He was specific about these lights. He said, let the lights in the firmament of heaven divide the day from the night. Then he got even more specific about these lights. He said, let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and for years. And then he became even more specific about the placement and what these lights were going to contribute in their environment. Y'all, do you know that God has given Everything a purpose, everything from the ant 
to the snail, to the fish, to the rabbit, to the squirrel, to us. He has given everything and everyone a purpose for being here on earth. We need to figure out what our purposes are. So we need to therefore get into the right environments to figure out what our purposes are. For everyone was created to solve a problem and to manage whatever God has gifted us with that he placed on the inside of us. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. If the squirrel and the ant can figure out their purpose, people, 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 y'all, we need to figure it out and figure it out soon because we don't have forever. We need to begin to place ourselves into the right environments. Take, for example, a plant. A plant can't grow outside of the environment in which it was created to grow in. Now, all plants need one thing, soil. But some plants need sun. Some plants need shade. Some plants need a little water. Some plants need hardly any. Some plants need a lot of water. But the environment has to be right for the specific plant. We were planted here on earth by God for a specific purpose. And just as that plant needs all of those specific things to grow in the right environment, so do we. We have to place ourselves in the right circumstances in order for the manifestations to be cultivated in our lives. So if our environments are toxic, our environment are not conducive to our growth, conducive to our discovering our purposes, conducive to us prospering, being fruitful, multiplying, replenishing the earth, subduing it, and having dominion over the earth, then we need to turn aside and begin to seek the Holy Spirit counsel to lead us and to guide us into all truth and we must and I repeat must get into God's word because when we don't know the purpose of a thing or the purpose for our lives abuse is inevitable for example when you smoke you know that you may end up with cancer but even if you don't end up with cancer you're destroying your lungs. If you have sex out of wedlock and have a baby, now you become an unwed parent. And if you were to take any electrical device, such as a space heater and place it in water, you're liable to be electrocuted. We must get an understanding concerning the purposes for our lives and the things that God has allowed us to create and place them in the right environment to grow. Otherwise, abuse will be inevitable. I'm going to go ahead and get back on track talking about the lights and their purpose and their placement. And where God said, let them be for signs, for seasons, for days, and for years. Then he said, let them be for lights in the firmaments of heaven to give light upon the earth. God made two lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And he made the stars. Thus, we have the sun and the moon. But check this out. God created the environments first before he created us to survive in them. And then he went on to create the waters and place them in their desired atmosphere. He went on to begin to bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that had life, the fowls that may fly above the earth in the open firmaments of heaven, great whales, every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their own kind, every winged fowl after his kind. Once he had created their environment and placed them in it, he said, 
be fruitful, multiply, and fill the waters in the sea, and let the fowls multiply the earth. And then God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures after his kind. And so the earth created the cattle, creeping things, and the beasts of the earth. And each of them were created after their own kind. And finally, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over all these things, the fish of the sea, the fowls of the air, the cattle, the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So when God told us to be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and to have dominion over everything that he created on earth, he created the environment for us to be successful in it. And the reason that some of our environments are toxic is because we place ourselves outside of the environment that is conducive to our growth. We don't obey the word of God and we live a lifestyle that is not pleasing to God. So when that happens, our environments become toxic. Just like the plant, when its environment isn't conducive to growth, it develops a fungus. And if it isn't treated properly and in time, it will begin to create an overgrowth. And die. And it works the same way when we overindulge in alcohol, illicit sex, riders, lifestyle, drugs, premarital sex, smoking, lesbianism, homosexuality, lying, stealing, and cheating. When our environments are toxic, it just breeds a ground for all types of diseases. It breeds a ground for high blood pressure, bad nerves, and depression. That's just a few of what it does. Toxicity is a greenhouse for cancer. And you know, you can have cancer and it's not just of the cancerous kind. Some types of cancers are negative attitudes, negative ways, negative vibes, negative personalities. They're just cancerous. And do you know that type of cancer can kill you just as well as the other cancers? Especially when they're left untreated. Loveys, if you all don't know the Lord today, I ask that you all will repent of your sins. Ask the Lord to forgive you and turn from your wicked ways. And ask the Lord to allow the Holy Spirit to begin to lead and guide you. And begin to baptize yourself. Immerse yourself into the Word of God so that He can help you to be cleansed. Begin to create an environment through the Word of God that is conducive to your growth to your learning and begin to get into his word and just immerse yourself. You may not understand everything in the beginning, but just begin to get into it and then pray and ask for understanding of his word. And I'm sure and certain that he will grant you that understanding to create your environment that is conducive for your growth. The purpose for your environment is for you to be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and to have dominion over the earth. Take note that in Genesis chapter 1, God spoke the words, and so it was. And if we stay within our environments that he created for us, so it will be. Amen. Love you. It's time to go. I love you guys. And I want you all to know that I'm always praying for you. And you know what my main prayer is, is that if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior and your Lord, you will make him your personal Savior and your Lord today. And come on into the kingdom of God and begin to activate and demonstrate the kingdom of God that is within you. Luke chapter 17 verses 20 and 21.